what if there was a perfect sport? What would this activity even entail? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in my undeniable expertise and complete objectivity, I believe that a perfect sport does indeed already exist. And lest we lie to ourselves, I may be slightly biased, slightly being the key word here, but that's not without its reasons. For I firmly believe that anyone who has ever played will admit the intoxicating thrill of striking a clean forehand cross court or belittling one's opponent with an ace down the tee. Tennis is a sport engaging socially, mentally, and physically, and this lays the groundwork for the sport's universality and hence its greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to explore the world of tennis and how its multifaceted nature deems it suitable to be named the GOAT amongst sports. But to lay some undeniable foundations, let me first bring up the results of a scientific study. And to do so, I would like to refer to the Copenhagen City Heart Study. It researched the correlation between various life expectancies correlated with different sports. Over 9,000 people were monitored over a period of 25 years. And the results, as you may imagine, were rather interesting. But let me begin with what was obvious. The results, when compared, were adjusted for age, sex, weekly activity volume, uh, income, education, uh, diabetes, smoking, and other factors that the researchers deemed necessary to be evaluated. And as such, those who reported little to none physical activity were most likely to have died in the ensuing decades. But now comes the interesting part, because it turns out that those who played tennis were found to have the most significant increase in life expectancy. For the increase noted by the researchers was that of 9.7 years. 9.7 years is an immense amount of time, and to quantify, let us think of the longest tennis match in history, a legendary 2010 Wimbledon second round clash, which lasted 11 hours and five minutes. Now, in this period, one could play over seven and a half thousand of these matches. And to compare these results with other sports, the result for tennis was over twice that for soccer players and more than thrice relative to those who jogged, cycled, or swam. So why was tennis the sport which noted the highest of expected increases in life expectancy? Well, I believe we can trace the causation to a number of factors. And these factors, though present in other sports, are uniquely combined within the game of tennis. But let's begin with a very trivial one, the social aspect. Ladies and gentlemen, social isolation was proven to be the most accurate predictor of a shortened life expectancy. And tennis helps alleviate this social isolation because by definition, tennis involves the participation of either two or four persons. And as such, playing tennis exceeds strictly exercise and engages a sense of trust, commonality, and community amongst its players. And, lest we lie to ourselves, is there a better source for motivation than wanting to beat one's colleagues? Togetherness promotes a sense of, uh, a sense of trust and this is truly a, a unique aspect because it is... Uh, of, of unparalleled beauty, and though tennis as a sport is also one which, which is characterized by this intrinsic beauty, I think that we can also uh, reiterate this, this standard of beauty to another of tennis's aspects. And this aspect is tennis's diversity. Because there is no one correct way to hit a shot, there are no two of the same techniques, and there are no two of the same matches.
There's the one-handed and the two-handed backhand. There's the platform and the pinpoint stance on serve. There are Western, Eastern, and Continental grips, and one can even select from surfaces, from grass, clay, or hard court. Now, the selection is such that a player is constantly motivated to develop the idiosyncratic style of play, to delve deeper into the game and to explore its many possibilities. This allows for constant change and a dynamic nature which keeps the player in excitement and keeps them happy to be on court playing and trying new things. We've gone so far as covering technique and covering potential opponents. So at this point, I believe it would be worthy to talk about what a match of tennis entails. Well, tennis matches are intense, particularly in singles tennis. And in fact, the highest heart rate I have ever noted is a staggering 205 beats per minute, which is slightly above 3.4 beats per second and an immense value. The, the question I got asked most, having, having achieved this record, this personal record, was, was how am I still alive? An excellent question, uh, and one I don't perhaps know the precise answer to, but I'm happy to reiterate my, my experiences here before you today. And let's look into what makes tennis such a physical sport. Well, tennis is a game of repeated interval bursts of intense physical exercise. And this exercise engages large muscle groups and also necessitates full body movement. And insofar as studies have shown, these repeated intervals yield superior health outcomes relative to a constant rate of moderate exercise. Now, a further aspect of tennis is its decision-making and how strategy is so far-reaching to the game of tennis that one constantly has to think about the contact point of the next shot, about positioning, about racket head speed, about wrist pronation. Now, that's a lot to think about, but worry not. As time goes by, you will develop an aptitude to conquer this sphere of tennis as well. And this also allows for a constant promotion of critical thinking amongst players, a valued attribute both on and off the court. And when talking about this attribute, one can also go as far as looking into the psychological or the mental aspect of tennis. Because tennis is a fiercely mental game, and in this regard, rather similar to the game of chess, which both necessitate a high level of mental prowess so as to achieve uh, success in so far as beating one's opponents and achieving one's goals. And I believe that one's tennis is only as strong as one's mentality and mindset. And this mindset is as central to the game of tennis as one's technique and one's physical dexterities. Tennis is a sport which engages on so many levels that I believe we must not overlook the central one. Tennis is simply fun. And it's a great game for all ages and for anyone, regardless of experience. Now, on a personal note, tennis has been an activity of unparalleled influence on my life. For I have had incredible experiences thanks to it, such as having the pleasure of playing with former world number 10, Timoja Baczynski. I've rebuilt friendships and established new ones. And admittedly, tennis has been an unrivaled conversation starter for me. And if all the arguments I've presented thus far have not been convincing, let me ask you this. Has your sport of preference ever had a statistic as legendary as average forehand topspin speed after pickle juice? Well, a very random statistic indeed, but I don't think that your sport has ever had such, a, such an incredible piece of information provided for its viewers. And tennis has. It's, it's, uh, why that is is a, is a different issue, more so one of biomechanics and how lactic acid influences a player. But nevertheless, tennis is a sport of many virtues. 
And I believe that anyone can find a facet of the game appealing to them. And at this point, my role comes to an end. And all that is left for me to do is to encourage you to grab a racket for yourselves and try the game of tennis. For it is one of unique value. And who knows, you might just end up living an additional 10 years. Thank you.